Mark 11, 12 to 14, I'll read. On the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry, and seeing a fig tree, verse 13, uh, afar off having leaves, he came if haply he might find anything thereon, and when he came to it, he found nothing. And I will watch this carefully. When he came to it, when he came to it, please watch what verse 13 says. Seeing a fig tree from afar. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Seeing a fig tree from afar and the leaves, the Bible says that he had decided to come a little bit closer if happily he might find anything thereon. And so the Bible says when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said to it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. I've been speaking to you on the law of need. And the law of need states that what you want influences who you are attracted to. <laughs> Already some people are saying, mm. now, now listen, listen. Those of you who are married, whatever you're going to be hearing now because a lot of you are going to start questioning why you got married in the first place then for those of you who are not married you're going to thank god that you are, you are not yet married and for those of you that have just had a breakup you're going to thank god that he walked away and she walked away now for those of you who are married one of the things i would just want to let you know is that don't make any decision yet until you get to the end of my message because I've got some recommendations for you at the end of the message. But I'm really going to make you uncomfortable. And I will let you know why you have been behaving the way you've been behaving in your marriage lately. And why your wife has not been comfortable with you and you've not been comfortable with your wife. Why everybody's been carrying a straight face in the house. Is that okay? Can I have an amen in the house of God now? <laughs> So, so just follow me carefully. You, you're going to see why you got married to your wife and then suddenly you now began to, and that's why you're not comfortable at home anymore. You prefer to stay somewhere else while away the time out there before going back home. Because what you have at home now is not what you thought you were supposed to go for or what you were supposed to have. So we're going to deal with that in a short while. But thank God also because there's hope tonight. You didn't hear, I said there's hope tonight. We serve a God who can make water to become wine may you have depths of understanding in the name of jesus so if you have married water god can turn water into water but it says that there's a lot of process involved a amen so if what you married and thought was going to be wine turns out to be water don't throw the water away so can i give the warning ahead of time because somebody's going to start listening to me and say, hey, hey, I just got it now. I just, I have to let this woman go. I have to let this man go. Uh -uh. We serve a God who can turn water into water. But for you who is a single, if what you thought you were going to meet was water, wine, and you got there and discovered it's water, now the Lord is left to you to decide whether, uh, okay. Good luck to you as a single. The law of needs states that what you want influences who you are attracted to. But it is what you need that decides who you will be connected to and satisfied with. I'll state that carefully again. The law of needs states that what you want influences who you are attracted to but ultimately it is what you need that decides who you connect with and settle with in essence what i want will attract me to you 
if I find it in you. But ultimately, whether I will settle down with you or not depends on finding what I need in you. <laughs> now, let me quickly say it this way. Unfortunately, many never get to figure out what they need until after what they want has led them into marriage. And so it's a marriage you will now come to discover that the person you married based on what you want that you found in the person it is a marriage many of us come to discover that the person who offers you what you want outside of marriage does not have the capacity to deliver on what you need in marriage. <laughs> Praise God. Let's get down to the scriptures so that I can start from a scriptural point of view and then move on to applicable matters, you know. Jesus had a specific need. What did Jesus want? He wanted food. Am I correct? Sir? Don't forget this, please. Jesus at this point needed food. Somebody say need food. Yes. He needed food food. Now, don't forget, he may want rest, but he needs food. Food. He may want water. Is that okay? But what he truly needs is water. Uh -huh. So he had quite a number of wants, but at this point in time, Jesus was able to discern his needs. What he needed was food. He saw a fig tree. Hmm. He saw a fig tree that looks good. Let me put it another way. He saw a fig tree that had good looks. Because the Bible says that, don't forget what the scripture says, that and seeing a fig tree, he had a need and seeing a fig tree from afar off having leaves. Leaves, if you take up leaves from trees, what you have is nothing but just a skeleton of the tree, just a caricature of the tree. A tree is not beautiful. A tree is not attractive without its leaves. Am I correct? Huh. So the Bible says he saw the fig tree from afar. Having leaves. And then the next word that we saw in scripture was that. He saw the fig tree from afar. Having leaves and he came. Now let me say this quickly. Sisters, it is critical if you really want a brother to come. Because the Bible says he saw a fig tree having leaves. He came. May you get the understanding. He saw a fig tree from afar. And he watched her. He came. Eluma, I know you are married. And your husband has been following you from afar lately. He's been following you. From, you are in the same house, but following you from afar. The Bible says, Peter followed Jesus from afar. Am I correct? Now, listen. It doesn't matter how afar or how far off your husband is, if you understand the principles of the fig leaves, you can make any Jesus to come. He saw the fig leaves from afar, he came. If you know how to package yourself in the house, he will come. I'm talking about married people, please, not singles. <laughs> and therefore, I'm going to deal with singles now. Sister, there are brothers watching you from afar but can't come because they can't see fig leaves. Pastor, Pastor, I know God, what God has put inside me. I, Pastor, a man should look, the Bible says, man, look at the outward appearance. 
Now, does that mean you should have <laughs> fighting leaves? No, fig leaves. Is that okay? Don't have leaves that drive people away. Just have fig leaves. Is that okay? Look good. That's what we're saying. I'll be taking it gradually. We'll get to where we're going to. And on the morrow, when they were come to Bethany, he was hungry and seeing a fig tree from afar, having leaves, he came. He came. But, but when you see, sister, you can have fig leaves and look attractive and all of that. Brother, you can look attractive. And, and I recommend our brothers in church, the kind of sisters we're having right now, please, let me, let me, in case some of our brothers don't know, particularly those who have come with the church from the Old Testament era, those who are with us in the wilderness uh, and, and don't even know that we've already entered Jordan now. Amen. Now, wake up, brother. The, the sisters now are not the sisters then. Amen. They've improved. And some of you brothers have not yet understood what it means to improve. There, there's a shift, brothers. Is that okay? And, and if really you want to command the respect of some of these, our sisters, if you want them to come, then you've got to make sure they see leaves on you too. You cannot be carrying most sash all around and look like something that they are trying to drive from a village. We don't even know if you are an Al Qaeda network or you belong to uh, whether you what was that the other terrorist groups are? Eh? Ashba, we don't we don't know which one you belong. <laughs> Praise God. Man, we we got sisters in this church now who've got their. First degree, they've got their masters. You, you understand what I'm saying now? All manner of certifications. These ladies know how to carry themselves. And, and, and you know, they are seeing brothers that the Holy Spirit is telling them that's likely going to be the brother. But, but because they can't see fig leaves, they can't come. You only have four Sundays in a month. Can't you package your best shirts for those Sundays? appear in church you are looking confusing you you your your presence quenches the conviction in a sister's heart she came to church thinking she has had god in the night that today i will put close to this brother perhaps somebody say perhaps i will show you all the things i'm sharing here it's in the bible it's in the bible Praise God. See the fig tree from afar. The Bible says, having leaves. He came. He came. He came. He shall come. He that you have been waiting for to come shall come. If he can see fig leaves. My brother, you're looking good. I hope it's not because you went to work today. Praise God. Huh? Even those of us who are already out of circulation, people like me, Pastor John, the rest of us, Pastor, those of us who are already out of circulation, are no more marketable. Do you understand me? Because forever our case is settled. Are you forever, oh Lord, thy word is settled? Hmm? You understand me? Call this one we are doing all this. It's just, it's just for God, though. We're already in a hopeless state. There's no more. <laughs> Pastor, you're only inspiring yourself, honestly. All these dresses we are pulling, all these tie, and we are just married ourselves just so that you don't think we are we are hungry. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> bro, are you hearing me? Bro, are you hearing me, sir? All that tie shoe, it's all hopelessness. You are hooked. Forever you are gone. All these choir sisters are just to come, have you as their father in the Lord, usher them into marriage. Are you what I'm saying now? You are gone. Thank God your wife is in the choir. <laughs> I kept that there as a trap. You want to move, it's a, you just fall into a trap. Sweetheart, where, where were you going to? Where were you going to? <laughs> where, where, where were you going to? Eh? No, okay, no, I was just walking around. Thank God my hands grab your legs. <laughs> Praise God. Single brothers who want to marry, pastor. And sisters cannot see fig trees on them, fig leaves on them, so that they can come. Young man. <laughs> I mean, just don't know how to package yourself. Keep your head, do look nice. 
Look nice. Huh? Blend colors properly. If you are going to be on casuals, put on solid casuals. Put on a shoe, shoe that looks like shoe, not something that is looking. We don't know whether it's a shoe, whether it's. Eh? <laughs> God. Oh, hallelujah. I like the word of God. The Bible says he saw leaves and he came. He saw leaves and he came. The law of attraction. I'm not going to that today. Moses saw a bush that was burning and he came. There are people that will never connect with you until they are attracted to you. Some of my daughters in this church, Pastor, on Sunday, I, I, I'm inspired to greet them. Then there are some, I will see them trying to come to greet me, and I'm inspired to go in a different direction. Even when nobody's calling me somewhere, I'll be looking for somebody to greet in that direction. Because I must escape this one. Are you going to say? Then there's this other one, Pastor, I will just feel like, if in the crowd, tell, come, I just want to say hello. How are you? You understand? Because the fig leaves are good. And there are some of our brothers, Pastor. On Sunday, sometimes when I see them, and even during midweek service, I feel like carrying a sister to go and meet them. Sister, can't you see this one? And then I see some brothers, and I see sister around them, and I just feel like coming to hold them. I say, can't you walk away? Can't you walk away? <laughs> now, now, listen, before you switch up the seat, in case you are listening by CD or whatever, there's something deeper I'm about to share now, so don't think we're just on stopping at the superficial level. Praise God. He saw fig leaves. Let me move on. He saw fig leaves from afar off, having leaves. Pastor, any time my wife, now this is for couples, please. Any time my wife goes on fig leaves, you know what I'm saying, man? When it doesn't, what I am out of God, I, I come. Are you going to say? He saw fig leaves and he came. Are you going to say, sir? He saw and he came. He saw and he came. He saw and then there's no other way, sir. He sees and he comes. The same thing, he can see and he goes. When the same house and you, you're a woman, married woman, you're tying rapper, wearing short, wearing boo boo inside the house. And you want him to come? No, the Bible says so fig leaves and he came. Why should why you scratch your head? <laughs> he's, fe he's feeling so bad that his wife is not here. Unfortunately for him now, the door is closed. <laughs> Oh, how I love Jesus. You are a son of Jesus, am I correct? So it means whatever attracted your master, it will attract you. Madam, in the house, put on fig leaves. Something that can make him come. I speak metaphorically using the word fig leaves. Some of you don't know how to attract your husbands at all. Just wear one mumu dress inside the house that looks like pap. Ogi. Ogi dress. The dress is depressing. The, the, your, the, the whole thing is confusing, misdirecting, is passion destructive or passion destroying. You have to get this CD and dash any couple you have to give to. Amen. And I'll collect a special offering for what I'm sharing with you today. Amen. Somebody's been delivered from years of waiting, unnecessary waiting. Your waiting has not been mandated by God. Ignorance has perpetuated it. Praise God. He's so fig leaves and the Bible says that he came. 
Now, now when he came, hmm, I, I like Jesus up. When he came to the fig tree, now he said, look, listen, now your, your, your leaves have attracted me to you, but something different has to keep me with you. Oh, come on, don't miss that. I mean, your fig tree, your fig leaves attracted. So I have come. But whether I will stay with you or not is predicated not on seeing leaves again, but I want to find fruits, 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 fruits. So you can wear G strings, you can wear Y strings, Q strings. It will attract me to you, but what will keep me with you is what, sir? Not the strings, not the leaves, but the fruits. Fruits. Woo! Hey, <laughs> sir, I have had situation whereby in the house. 2003, I will not forget. Man of God, my wife was well dressed. I mean, don't, don't try to. So she was well dressed. It was, I saw leaves. And I came. And man of God, as I came, I don't know what happened. She just brought out a subject. A passion destroying subject. Man of God, instantly, I went. I went. Why should this kind of fruit be showing up at such a godly moment? <laughs> he came because of the leaves, but when he got there, he said, can you hold on for a moment? Before we do engagement and go into marriage, can I check for fruits? The law of needs. What I wanted attracted me to you. But what I need now is what's going to keep me with you. That's why you've always attracted people into relationship with you, but you don't keep them. And you keep wondering, and you keep saying maybe it's demonic influence. No, 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 no. Your academic leaves pull them close to you. Your intelligentsia, whatever, your persona, your name it, attracts them to you. But when they get to you and they are looking for fruits, they can't find. The Bible says, if happily he might find, but he did not. Let's, let's get, down, get down to the word of God here. And seeing a fig tree from afar of having leaves, he came. If happily might find anything thereon, and when he came to it, he was attracted to it, and then he came to it. The Bible says he found nothing but, please let me say it, say nothing but leaves. Is that not what we find in most of the relationship we're going to today? Nothing but uh, by the time I get to the person, only I just come and say, nothing but what? Nothing but fine face. Yeah, just has good, well carved mustache and beard. <laughs> fine face. Doesn't make fine husband. Nothing but what, sir? Hey! And that is the frustration of many singles today. Not only singles, but married people. After you have been married, only to discover that the person you married is nothing but what, sir? Nothing but leaves. Hey, hey. Now, now, don't forget, I gave you a warning before we got started. I said, don't make decisions until you hear the end of the message, okay? Nothing but what, sir? From afar, I saw, and she was like, my God, it's a wonderful woman, it's a wonderful guy, X, Y, and Z, and then boom, 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 bam, we got married, and then we got home, and when we got home, as I came to it, I 
drew nearer to this man. I drew nearer to this woman. Looking for fruits. Only to discover that I actually got married to nothing but leaves. Fine face. Tall girl. Six foot three. Five foot four. Tall. That, that's all I have now. The, 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 the only thing I can boast of is nothing but what sir? Leaves. Tall guy, huge, macho, bicep, triceps. That's all I can brag about. Tall, dark, and handsome. Nothing but what, sir? Leaves. Hello, sir. Where are we going to? Do I know myself? Nothing but leaves. What is our plan for the future? I'm trying to find out. Nothing but what, sir? Leaves. Nothing but uh, leaves. Can carry weight, but can't carry a plan. Nothing but leaves. She can make up, but can't paint the picture of a good future. Nothing but leaves. Nothing but leaves. She dresses outside. She, she dresses to kill. When you see outside the way she's dressed, again, she can captivate. If not for the father she's married, she can captivate another person that is looking for leaves like me. Only to get to her again and discover it's nothing but uh, leaves. Leaves. No substance. No depth. No depth. Well packaged container. No solid content. The greatest frustration you now live with is the frustration of the fact that you've already bought the container. You paid for it. You brought it home. Only to discover that the content was not what you went looking out for. You have the container, but there's no content. And in marriage, what keeps you together for the first two, three, four, five years is the container. Years after, what really keeps a marriage is the what, sir? Content. Follow me as I unveil to you a little bit of the mystery of this thing called the law of needs. Jesus wanted food. He saw a tree that had good looks. And he was attracted to this tree that has good looks only to discover that the tree that has good looks did not have good fruits. <laughs> PJ, the Bible says that it was not yet time for figs. I'm about to shock you now. Get ready everybody. I'm about to say something. When God shared this with me too, it blew my mind. It was not yet, it was not yet time for what, sir? Say it again, for what? But, but the Bible says this particular fig tree decided to develop its leaves early. This, it, it comes to me from what God dealt with me. It, it comes to me, uh, you know, that this tree is more interested in attracting people. It's not the time for figs yet but you started shooting out you are more interested in developing your leaves than your fruits <laughs> all the trees are smart enough to wait until the time so that as the leaves are coming out within a short time the fruits follow because I will need the leaves to work together for the development of the fruits. But it seems you are more interested in developing your leaves. And this is the undoing of the 21st century young people. We are more concerned about developing our, our leaves than our water, than our fruits. When a young lady is supposed to look for another woman who is married to serve her, like, what's her name, sir? Like Ruth. Look for a Naomi, a God-fearing person. Now, I didn't say perfect woman. You will never find one on earth. Is that okay? Because your mentor is your wisdom provider and not your perfection or perfection introducer. It doesn't introduce you to perfection. It introduces you to wisdom. Why you're supposed to look for someone who will mentor you? You're busy. You're busy taking your time out just to develop. Can I, uh, what kind of acrylic finger are you using? What kind of uh, whiz? Uh, Brazilian whiz? So, so, she's spending time to do what, sir? The, 
you don't have any book on marriage. You've not read books about the five love language, the five apology language. Men are from Venus or women are from Mars. You've not read all those books and all of that. And you want to go into marriage and you're spending all your money to put what's up? Leaves in place. Leaves. Same thing with our brother Sue. Spending all our monies. Tie, blends, and all of that. We're spending all. Good. Don't forget I said you need to have leaves. But don't go for leaves at the expense of fruits. Because all together, ultimately, what will decide the state of anybody and the longevity of your marriage is fruits and not leaves. The tree developed its fruit ahead of the season of fruits. It developed its leaves ahead of the season of fruits. Jesus was already attracted to this tree. He had come to the tree. Everybody saw Jesus walking away from other trees. Now, before the public, Jesus had made a public identification with this fig tree. Only for Jesus to arrive at the tree and discover that it does not have what Jesus needs. Thank God for Jesus. Since this has not been consummated, Jesus decided to bring about the termination of this relationship very early. He walked away from the tree. Ended the relationship with the tree immediately for one simple reason. The tree looks like what he wanted but did not have the capacity to meet the needs of Jesus. Hmm. He walked away from the tree knowing that he can only improve the looks of the tree by pruning the leaves. But he cannot put fruits on the tree. I want to help somebody here. You have to hear me carefully. Jesus walked away from the tree. For one reason, man of God. Jesus knew that I can only improve the looks of this tree. I can only cut tree, prune the branches and the leaves. But Jesus knew this. If this tree does not have fruits, I can't put fruits in this tree. Woo. I can teach him how to dress. I can teach her how to dress. I, I can tell her that this color does not match with that color. That's pruning the leaves. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Uh, because there are some people God will send into their lives basically to carry out the assignment of repackaging them. Is that okay, sir? Now, that, that, is, that is something that is achievable. I can come into your lives and prune the leaves and cut the branches and all of that. But, sir, I cannot put fruits. I can't put character in you. You don't have it. You don't have it. It is an effort in futility for you to know that a tree does not have fruits and you will be the Messiah that will generate fruits on that tree. It's an effort in futility. Because fruits don't come from outside. Fruits come from within. If the root that produces fruit is not in the tree, nothing from outside can hang a tree, a fruit on a tree. You know what I can tell you? If you carry a fruit and hang on a mango tree, come back in three days, three days time, it will be rotten. Because it did not grow from within the tree. And that is why when you are trying to... Con Stop talking the way you are talking. Now you talk, you are, you are a little bit... Calm down. Behave. Have you noticed every time you are trying to prune the character of an individual, what you get is resentment in return. <laughs> and you know any marriage that is going to go wrong, the signs are always there from the beginning. It's just that people have what I call hope in futility. She knows he's an arrogant guy. But she's like, don't worry, pastor. 
Pastor, I have changed a lot of people in my life. Oh. In my secondary school, a lot of my juniors, I changed them. I will change him. Pastor, just give me two years. This guy, he will be humble. In two years, son, he will be humble. Just watch. I know what to do, Pastor. I have the key. The key of death and life. I have it. Ask those of us who are married, how many of it have we changed? If I can, I shock you. Any character you find in an individual before marriage can only be amplified by marriage. Marriage amplifies character. Ask those who are married, how many have they changed? Huh? Um, you've changed some. Uh -huh. For some of us, our prayer will not differ from that of Paul. Or that that's what Jesus, the Lord, said to Paul. Paul said, Lord, often I've asked of you to take this stone away from me. And the Lord will say to him, my son, this stone shall be with you. But my grace, <laughs> you will carry this one to the grave. Is that okay? You won't die. It won't destroy your ministry. But that you will carry it. It's the price of your choice. The consequences of your decisions. It wasn't that I didn't warn you. There were so many warnings. But you were smarter than whatever voice was trying to object. Your decision. Object to your decisions. I will give you grace. You won't die. The tongue will, from time to time, you, when you are going to the kitchen, the tongue, you know, you want to lie down in the bed, you feel the tongue. Sitting down in the sitting room, poke. <laughs> And over time, you get used to the tongue. Because there's something about pain. The longer it takes, the more you become accustomed to it. Don't forget I said there's still hope. Eh? So don't. <laughs> Particularly tonight is a little bit of a warning to the singles. It's obvious. You know, this guy is an arrogant, pompous, one one disrespectful person doesn't respect authority doesn't respect your parents I mean, this girl does not regard your mom you took her to your mom i just like hi mom see the mother that bore you saw your father hello sir good afternoon mr james your father is mr james and your mother said, ah, my son <laughs> You know, if you, particularly if you come from some part of the country, your mother will not, uh, she'll just, uh, when you say, Mommy, I'm sure you've met my wife to be, and uh, Mommy, very soon we're going to be getting married. <laughs> and I just wanted you to see her mom. Uh, some wise woman, like my mother, she said, uh, uh, Can I see you? <laughs> uh, my mother will just ask you a simple question. Uh, so that's the woman you want to marry. Uh, yes, mom. You don't like her? Ah, uh, no. I just asked you. Ask. Have you prayed? If my mother asked you twice, have you prayed? Just know that what she said is that God is not involved. And then you start speaking English, mommy. Can't you see this girl is so? The, you, and everything you start talking about is water, nothing but uh, leaves. Leaves. Your mother is seeing the absence of fruits. You are busy campaigning about leaves. Campaigning. Mommy, this girl, everybody talks about her. She's one of the most beautiful girl. Uh, mommy said, look, my son. <laughs> I am in this. See, when I sit down, what I see, you can stand on top of the roof. You won't see it. It is, it is a gift of old age. It is what wisdom confers that knowledge cannot supply. Education cannot make it available. For if education can make it available, we'll not be having the rate of divorce that we are having among educated people. The highest rate of divorce is among educated people. It seems the more the degrees, the more the propensity to divorce. <laughs> Nothing but leaves. Nothing. Nothing. 
Only Mary Kay has bag full of cosmetics. Nothing. Nothing but leaves. Only certificate, no character. He goes around bragging. Nothing. Speaks with tongues, no manners. Can quote Bible, but doesn't understand basic ethics. Nothing but leaves. Nothing but leaves. Jesus knew he can only improve the leaves, but cannot hang fruit on the tree. Baby girl, you're not going to give a man the character he does not have. For character is not generated from without, it is generated from within. If it is not there, it is not there. I have come to realize from my study of that scripture, sir, that every attempt that Jesus will want to make to ensure that that tree produces fruit, one, it will result in frustrating the tree. Because, listen, there's nothing you can do to make this tree produce fruit now. There is nothing available in the air, in the, on the ground, in the atmosphere within the tree that has the capacity to make it produce fruit now. So to try to make it produce fruit is an effort in futility. You will frustrate the tree and you will frustrate yourself. And that's why many of you are frustrated in relation because you are trying to change each other. Effort in futility. Okay, I think I have an answer for somebody. What if I'm already married? And I've come to realize that, Pastor, <laughs> you, there's no better way to say, Pastor. I married nothing but... Uh, because there's no fruit in this marriage. No fruit. Hmm? There's grammar, but there's no... In fact, there's even children, but there's no, no fruit. What do you do? I'm going to share with you, sir. I'm sorry, but that is the honest truth that I'm going to share with you. Singles, you're also going to learn. The only way to make a tree like the fig tree that does not have fruit to be a fruit is to wait. You, you will wait. You will... Pastor Sam, how long? I don't honestly, I don't know. I don't know. You will wait until what, sir? Until the time of figs. Until when everything works together towards now the production of fruits from the tree. Until then, sir, you shall endure the absence of fruits. For nothing but time. Nothing but time and the season for the production of fruits can make a fig produce fruits. So if you have married a man or a woman who does not have fruits, only have leaves, you will begin to pray. Father, usher my man into his season. When the Holy Spirit will begin to walk in and through him, so that gradually we we'll begin to see changes, characters, and fruit, the kind of fruit that I've been looking for. Now, until that time, you will ask God to uphold you so that the presence of what you need that is absent in your marriage, the presence of it in somebody else outside will not make you step out of your marriage. You will wait. If I want the prayer point you will have to be making is, Lord, shorten the time. Lord, don't let this is taking long. This 10 years into the marriage now, Lord, shorten it. Lord, you know I have a need. This woman is not meeting my needs. Lord, bring the time of the fig so close. Uh -uh. You will quote scriptures. The Bible says you are the God who changes times and what, sir? Pastor Sam has taught us through your word that God, you can collapse time. Father, if it was naturally arranged that this woman would take about 20 years before she changed, Lord, you know, by that time I would have been dead. 
Lord shorten the time. Do it in two years. Do it in two years. Shorten. You will become a prayer warrior. Are you going to say? Do it in two years, Lord. Hasten. Those who are married know what I'm talking about. If God does not change your partner, you are wasting your time thinking you're going to change that person. The truth of the matter is, an attempt to change your partner by yourself is going to produce another character in you that you may find difficult to change after your partner has changed. So prayer is the key. You're going to start praying. Father, change my spouse. Shorten the time. Father, let that come to church one day where the entrance of your word will give her light and understanding. You say, be it transformed by the renewing of your word, by the renewing of your mind, by the renewing of your mind. Father, let her come to the church where the word of God will transform her mind. Now listen, it may not happen in a Sunday, may not happen in a year, but as she keeps coming, the word, as she keeps beholding the mirror, she is changed from one level of glory to another. The first thing you must do if you have a spouse who is nothing but leaves and you desire fruits from that relationship, the first thing you must do is to give up the expectation of change in the immediate. That's General Stock Day's paradox. Those of you that have read Jim, Jim Collins, that's one thing uh, Jim Collins will tell you. Uh, General Stockdale. They call it Stockdale Paradox. Don't expect her to change immediately. At the same time, expect that God can do it at any time. So until that time, we're going to now apply the law of celebration and the law of gratitude. Until when you see fruit, you will celebrate what you have and take your eyes away from what you don't. Are you getting something here? At least, if I don't have fruit, at, at least I have a tree, a beautiful tree. Abi, I have a fig tree. So let me be celebrating the fig tree that I have. Let me be thankful for the father. Mother. See, sweetheart, you are keeping yourself beautiful. Let me be appreciating what she's able to keep. At least she keeps her leaves. <laughs> While I wait, like Job said, all the days of my appointed time, will I wait until this change comes. Let me show you one more thing and I'm out. <sighs> now listen. Jesus walked away from this tree for one reason, sir. Pastor, Jesus did not have all the time. His ministry was about to come to an end. So Jesus did not have all the time to wait for this tree to step into a season of figs to begin to produce fruit for Jesus to eat and continue his ministry. For Jesus to wait will mean ministry will be delayed. And if ministry is delayed, divine agenda will be altered. So it was obvious that since this relationship has not resulted into marriage, it was wisdom to do what, sir? Walk away from it. Jesus walked away because he knew one he didn't have all the time. I'm saying this to help somebody right now. You know that you only have five months more or six months to be married and here you are in relationship with somebody that only has nothing but what? Figs and you want to change the person within six months to fit into your agenda it doesn't happen like that. If the time before you is short, you do not have patience, let me advise that you walk away from whosoever you are in relationship with now that you are trying to change to fit into your agenda. Because in an attempt to change the person, what you are going to stir up is revolt. Are you getting what I'm saying? I've seen people just in a hurry we want to change each other. For those of us who are married, since you are not about to die now, you have a long time to live. You will live long. You will see your children's children. Since you have a long time to live, if your spouse does not have the fruit that you are looking for, you will ask God for grace and patience 
to wait until the appointed time when you will begin to see changes. Let me close with a few words. Particularly for married people and singles also. Until you identify what you need, you may not recognize who qualifies for your gift of friendship. Until you identify what you need, you may not know who qualifies for your gift of friendship. Sir, this is where we have trouble. Look at it this way, Pastor. What I need in marriage, I spelt it clearly to my wife. We, I proposed to her on the 2nd of January 2002. And on the 3rd of January, we were together at BG in Maryland. It's a restaurant. And that was the day she spoke with Pastor Bimbo. And Pastor Bimbo told me, Pastor Sam, you can go ahead. Without seeing that, Pastor Bimbo said, Look, Pastor Sam, there's a person that I think God has ordained for you. That day, sir, I looked at her and I said, Sorry, my Sam, oh yeah, is a mystery to a lot. I'm one person you should not try to follow with your head. I'm a little bit too complex for that. I said, Sam, where is the mystery to many? I said, but I want to simplify him to you. I said, because Jesus was a mystery to everybody. He speaks in parable to the crowd. I said, but to his inner caucus, the Bible says it got to a point in his life where Jesus opened himself, stripped himself naked before the 12. Am I correct, sir? Stripped himself naked. He said, the man that you see that is covered up in ecclesiastical glory, I want to make you see him in his humanity. Jesus took off his robe and told them, this is me. Put a towel around him and then went on his knees and then he washed their feet. He said, the man that makes the blind to see, the man that makes the cripple to walk, that makes dead bodies to come up. I want to show him, I want to show you who he is. Not in his divinity, but in his humanity. Only the person that qualifies for your gift of friendship should have access into your true identity. Until then, remain a mystery to many. <laughs> Do you know why most men are easy praise to women? Because the Bible said the simplicity of the simple shall destroy him. When a woman who should not understand your simplicity finds out who you are, it becomes easy for her to combine your access code and then have access into your true votes. Am I sharing too much with you this evening? I can have all, I have so many daughters here. The closer they get, the farther they get to discover they don't even know me. But yet, Mrs. Oye just has me. Mrs. Oye doesn't have to think about who I am. She knows. But such you know what I'm saying? Your woman should. Chinedu, 0467. Boom, and the door just opened. And here we have other women combining zero. You don't try 746. How about 1642? You don't try the other one. In open, okay. Maybe you could try X hash and then column four. I, have you tried that until it doesn't work? Because, man of God, that's why you have passwords. When a man's password is accessible to by other women, your downfall is inevitable. When a woman knows that food is your password, Samson. They were trying to figure out. Everybody was confused. Something was a mystery unto many. Until many began to look. At these Philistines were studying the trend of this guy. They said, come. The other time this guy told his father, he, wants to he just saw a prostitute and he said, he wants to marry her. And then the father said, no. He still went ahead. At another time again, he saw another woman. And then now he's with Delilah. This guy, his, his password is what, sir? W-O-M-A-N. Let's combine that together. And bam! The vote got open. The man shared his secret. They access the woman and the woman to say, how am I going to find out what this true secret is? And she got to discover that this man cannot withstand pressure. Under pressure, he will crack. And there are so many of us men like that. Women have known that the moment they come close to you and they, eh, I beg now, I, I call you yesterday, they call you again today. And, and they know that you can't stand call the first time, call the second time, call the third time, you're just going to crack. And they combine that password regularly and it opens the vault regularly. Identify.
identify what you need so that you will know who qualifies for your gift of friendship. I told my wife on the 3rd of January 2002, I said to her, Samoye, it's a mystery to many. I said, but I'm going to share with you nobody, what nobody has ever heard on this earth. This is me, one, two, three. I shared with her three simple things that make Samoye to be what Samoye is. Three simple things. Praise God. I should tell you, eh? Number one, have you written it down? Then the second one, have you also written that one down? Then the third one is exactly the one you just heard now. Write it down. Is that okay? <laughs> Praise God. So she knows what I need. Now, why did I tell her what I need? Get this right. Don't miss what I'm about to say now. Why did I tell her what I needed? On the, the Bible says he saw fig tree, so I have seen the fig tree in her, the fig leaves. That brought me close. Now we need to talk. This is no longer thinking, you know, your presence scintillates the oscillate that makes me vibrate in the realm of the frequent that now gets occult. Now listen, we're not here for all those rhymes. Are you young? There's marriage more important than rhyme. Are you young? So I said, hello, I saw fig leaf in you from afar. I came. But I am not marrying fig. I came into marriage with a need. What will make me be your husband for life is predicated on your capacity to meet that need. Have you been trained, graced, and equipped to meet the kind of need I'm coming with? As simple or complex as it may sound, my need, it is something that a woman who is not equipped and graced for me cannot handle. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I mentioned it to her. And she said to me, sweetheart, there's no problem. Right there, the woman began to demystify things that were confusing to me until that moment. My first day of meeting with my wife in that place where we had the meeting was the turning point in my life and in my extended family. If I wish she began to do it like this, I mean, our first meeting, it was like meeting with Rebecca who carried water and gave you, she gave you water on your first meeting. Oh God, help me. Pastor, the Bible says that the man said, the woman that qualifies to be the wife of Isaac will be the one that gives me what? Water. Meaning if she comes and gives me fire, she does not qualify. If she comes and gives me clothes, she does not qualify. Because the need is water. Isaac needs a woman that will comfort him. Water is symbolic of comfort. Isaac has just lost his mother. Isaac is looking for a mother in a wife. Isaac does not want a woman that will make him remember the father he has lost his mom. But a woman that will make him forget the father he had a mother. What a huge assignment. No wonder the Bible said when Isaac saw her, she came down from her donkey. Isaac saw her. He carried her to her, his mother's chamber. Every man has his mother's chamber inside him. She, he carried her to his mother's chamber and the Bible said he was comforted by her. I'm sharing too much with these people tonight. <laughs> First of all, so let's put it this way. As a married person, have you identified, PJ, have you identified what your need is? Your wife will remain a confused woman in that house until she knows what your true need is. She will be trying to do this, thinking that's what you need. Trying to do that, she will, buy, she will cook food because she thinks that's what you need. She will give sex. She thinks that's what you need. She will try to arrange the house, thinking that's what you need. Why get the woman in a state of confusion? Because you lack direction. All of you brothers in the church who are not married, the before I start talking about a woman, identify what your true need is. Are you coming to marriage for a bedmate? Do you want a bedmate, a playmate, a soulmate, a mindmate, helpmate? What are you looking for? So when she comes, you will tell her, sorry, yo, I'm not here for games. I'm looking for someone who is going to be speaking words of affirmation. I don't need food. I don't need this. I will appreciate them if you cook them. But what matters to me is that please, you will not speak 
bad words to me. I'm a word sensitive man. Words of affirmation is my love language. Do you have, ah, uh, she'll say, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm one person that talks. I will say it the way I am. I, I don't know how to play with words. I am blunt. So I don't have the capacity in me to be speaking, uh, okay, well, sweetheart, you are doing nice. When you are not doing well, I will tell you straight. See, I'm a blunt person. I will tell you straight the way it is. Now, and this is a guy who doesn't want to hear it straight because if he hears it straight, he shrinks into his shell. Already we are having a man who has a need and a woman who does not have the capacity to meet the need. I would like to close here because my time is up. <laughs> I'll leave everyone here to go home. Think about your true needs. What are you looking for? What's the core need in your heart? What do you want out of marriage? You're just looking for a mate. If she comes into your life, now she has come, she has seen the fig leaves. What's she coming to do in your life? What's she coming to do? What's she coming to do? For those of us who are married, have you told each other what your true need is? And let me say this. If your husband or your wife has told you what his or her true need is, please never, never play with the true need of an individual. Because whatever you do, if it does not meet the true need of your spouse, it will not bring satisfaction to that marriage. So satisfaction is predicated on meeting the true needs of one another. The law of needs tells you that what you want may bring you together. But ultimately, it is meeting what you both need that will do what, sir, keep you together for a long time. I wish you the very best in all your endeavors, particularly in this journey of marriage. And I pray that the Almighty God will keep you happy, keep you strong, cause you to fulfill your destiny in Jesus' mighty name. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you would like to help support the podcast through your giving and donations, kindly click on the donate button or visit www.samoyepodcast.com. Don't forget to join us daily for the Prophetic Prayer Hour with Rev Sam Oye via YouTube channel at Rev Sam Oye. Also, if what you desire is a change in your faith, family, and financial life, then experience the unraveling ministry of Rev Sam Oye by being in any of our life transforming services. Log on to www.thetransformingchurch.org for details. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and on